Hello Cardboard Lovers, it's Cardboard Badger here and today we have a deck tech for you. Black Green Miners Counters. Uh, a world of Hepatra. So um, I thought I would share this with you. Um, it has got a tiny splash of white though. So uh, I will explain my reasons for that uh, shortly. So um, why did I try and build this deck? Um, I wanted a new deck for Rivals. I've been playing plus one plus one counters for a long long time. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I have changed it over time. Um, really feel that I know that deck quite well. But um, I was a little bit fearful of uh, the Merfolk. I thought I was going to see them all over the place. Um, so I went to FNM last week, which is my first week of uh, the new block, or the rivals as it were. Um, and I was expecting to see uh, fish people everywhere. But um, I didn't see them hugely. Um, I think I had two games. Uh, other than that, it was dinos and it was vampires. But yeah, uh, the idea of the Mines Counter deck, um, as far as I was concerned, was even if the Merfolk were unblockable, uh, my counters would make them far weaker, or I could stack the counters to destroy them. But this deck that I'm going to show you today. Um, has got a few ways uh, in which to win other than just killing the creatures off and trying to swing in. Um, it will drain life, um, it will also um, allow massive creatures um, to be unblockable and hopefully swing in for the win. So with that being said we better get on with it and we're going to start off with uh, the lands. So here we go. We have 22 lands in total which is the smallest number of lands I've ever played in a deck, to be totally honest. Uh, but we do have creatures who can mana ramp and also fix colour if needed. So I was a little bit nervous about this, but so far, not that I've played this a lot, um, it may change in the future, but as a present, 22 lands. Um, I haven't had any problems yet. I may have just been very lucky. But uh, as far as the lands, uh, we have a playset. We have a whole four of Blooming Marsh. It's blooming fantastic. Um, absolutely love this card. Obviously, if you can't afford this card, um, we go forests and swamps. So, but yeah, if you if you can do it, yes. We also have two concealed courtyard. We need this because we have a slight splash of white. Uh, you will find out why soon. And um, I thought that would be the best card of the bunch. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, seven forests, eight swamps, and one plains. So that makes a total of 22 lands. As far as the creatures go, um, creatures in the one drop slot, we have two festering mummy. Uh, festering mummy is a 1 1, and when festering mummy dies, you may put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. So this is great. If this comes out turn one, we have something. We might get a couple of points of damage in. If on turn two they've got a dude that's 2-2 two, two, and they decide to block, we do one damage with the mummy and then we have the counter. The minus counter will then kill it. So I thought, you know, I think this is a great a great card. I personally was thinking of uh, doing the whole playset of the mummy, but it was quite important that I had a couple of cards um, that allowed me to cycle and discard. And that's where we come to our second one drop. Uh, two of Ruthless Sniper. Uh, for one black mana, we have a 1 2. And whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. And if you do, you can put a minus one counter on target creature. This again will be more relevant, probably sort of mid game um, when we get some of our other creatures out. That can then start gaining us a lot of value. But um, yeah, in total, we have four one drops. In the two drop slot, we have, this is where we really start hopefully getting some value. Uh, we've got Channeler Initiate, which is one and a green. Um, when Channeler Initiate enters the battlefield, put three minus one minus one counters on target creature you control. Um, tap and remove a minus one minus one counter from channeler, channeler initiate and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. 
So here we have one, our ramp, and also our color fixing if we needed to get any white mana. As far as do we want to chuck our three minus one counters on this or something else, um, it would probably depend on what your mana is. Um, if you really, really do need to get more mana very quickly, because um, maybe you've got some quite high drops in your hand already, then you're going to have to bundle them all on here. But obviously, you can tap it, you can get rid of one counter. If you're happy with your mana, you could always bung all three of those counters straight onto your Festering Mummy. That will kill the Festering Mummy, but then you can then put the trigger from the Festering Mummy and put a minus one, minus one counter on something else. Now, you could put it back on your Channeler Initiate, to be honest. Um, or you could pop it onto something your opponent's got. So basically, you would then be left with a 3 4 channeler initiate on turn 2. So we are playing a whole playset of uh, initiate. Fantastic card, really, really love it. In addition to that, we're going to play a Patra, Vizier of Poisons. Um, a Patra, we're going to be playing 3. Uh, it is legendary. Um, for a one black, one green. Um, when it deals combat damage to a player, you may put a minus one counter on target creature. Now, obviously, it could be your own creature. You could put it back onto your channel at initiate, which will then allow you to tap it and um, get the mana you want. But um, the second part is really important. When you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature, create a one one green snake creature token with death touch. So, as you will begin to see, you make snakes when you start putting down minus one counters. So, this is fantastic. Obviously, if you put three counters down on one target or one creature, um, you will not get three minus one minus one counters. You will get one. Um, obviously, if you have something that allows you to put them on individual creatures, you will get a snake for each counter on each individual creature. But um, yeah, if you've got a load of counters and it's all going on one, you just get that trigger once, making you one snake. But hopefully we can spread this across the board. So um, yeah, we're going to have three of those, and that will be mighty fine, hopefully. Next, our three drop. We have Amit Eternal, the zombie crocodile demon. Um, this is amazing. I mean, this is for what you can do with this card. Um, we're playing three of them, uh, and it is two and a black, and it has a flicked three, which is always good. Um, when this becomes blocked, the defending player loses three life. So already they've got that decision. Um, this is really good. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you put a minus one counter on Amit Eternal. So as soon as you play this, if they start putting down spells, if they start playing creatures, um, whatever it is they're going to do, every single time they do it, this triggers and we get a counter on it. So it's going to be weaker. I mean, it's a 5-5 five, five for 3, with obviously the downside of uh, becoming weaker every spell. But that's fine, because every time a counter goes on it, if we've got an uh, Apatcher out, we get a Death Touch Snake, which is quality. So we have three of those. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Um, if you can get this through for damage, which we will be able to do with some other bits and bobs we've got here, um, when it deals combat damage to a player, you can remove all the counters from it. So if you can sneak it through, it will then go back to a 5-5 five -five again, on your opponent's turn, they start casting stuff, counters go back on it again, we get more snakes. So we have three of those. In addition to that, we have, and this is lovely, this card, Obelisk Spider. Uh, a whole playset, and we have to. Um, it's three mana, it's a 1 4, but that's not really important. It's got reach, which could be important. Um, but it says here, when Obelisk Spider deals combat damage to a creature, put a minus one counter on that creature. So, it's got four. It's got four toughness. 
it can block. And when it blocks, it will then do them for one damage, and then the counter will kick in. We get a counter. It might not kill them, but another counter means we get another snake. Um, the good thing about this also is whenever you put one or more minus one counters on a creature, your opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. So if we happen to have out the Amit Eternal, the Zombie Grok, we've also got an Obelisk Spider out, they play a spell, I'm going to have to put a counter on my Croc, which then means we've got a Snake, we've got Hapatra out, we also drain them and we gain a life every time uh, a counter goes down. We've got four of these. Um, I played on Friday, I managed to have two Spiders out. So every single counter, I was gaining life, they were losing two. That, that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, our final three drop. We have two copies of Bontu the Glorified. So we have our legendary creature. We have our god. And for two and a black, we have a four six god. He's got menace. And he's also got indestructible. Uh, the good thing about this, obviously, you can't attack, you can't block. Unless something died this turn. The good thing is, if we keep pumping out tokens and we've got snakes, just snakes at the moment, but it will change, um, we can pay two mana, we can sacrifice one of our creatures, uh, and then the opponent loses one life and we gain one life. So we're draining, we're making snakes, we're then sacrificing snakes, we're draining them for more, we are gaining life, and that will then trigger um, Bond to the Glorified to do his thing, um, he will then obviously be able to attack and block. And he's got Menace, and he's got Indestructible. So that's good. And we are going to be playing two of those. Right, as far as the four drops, we have nothing. As far as the five drops, uh, we have Archfiend of Ifnir. Um, three black black, we have a 5-4 Flying Demon. Um, I like this card. Um, whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponent controls. So, if you are playing Vampires, if you're playing Servos, if you're playing anything that is pumping out loads of stuff, Zombies, um, and you've got this out, and you can cycle or discard a card, which you could possibly do with, well, we'll be doing it with an artifact uh, very shortly, which is a key part of this deck. Um, when you are able to cycle or discard a card, and you happen to have an opponent that's got eight creatures, we are going to be putting eight minus one counters down. Oh, if we have, um, if we've got a patcher out, we're going to make eight snakes. If we happen to have obelisk spider out, we are going to drain them for 8 life, and we're going to gain 8 life. So this is absolutely fantastic. It's also a flyer, which is pretty important. Um, keywords as far as flying on the Archfiend, and with Bontu, Menace and Indestructible. All these um, are quite important for the next card that we're going to be playing. And we're going to be playing two of... We're going to be playing Majestic Miriarch. And... Um, yeah, this did disgusting things. Um, it was an 1818, I think. Um, yeah, and uh, it became unblockable. I will let you know what it's going to do. It says here, uh, Majestic Miriarch's power and toughness are equal to twice the number of creatures you control. So, if we keep bunging out snakes and also other things um, with the enchantment that I haven't shown you yet, um, if we have to have 10 things out, this is going to be a 2020. The next part is at the beginning of each combat, so it will not have these at any other time but just in combat. If you control a creature with flying, then Miriarch will gain flying until end of turn. This is also the same for first strike, double strike, death touch, the whole lot. Um, so. This could have flying, thanks to Archfiend. It could have menace and indestructible, thanks to Bontu. Um, it 
should have Death Touch because of our token snakes. It can have loads of stuff. Um, and the more creatures we get, the bigger it will get. Um, yeah, I, I'm very excited to see just how ridiculous this one can get. So, um, yeah, it did um, good things. And we do have a very good way of making it unblockable, which is going to trigger a lot of counters. We have one more creature. It's a 12 drop. We're not going to be playing it for 12, obviously. Um, we have one copy of Galta Primal Hunger. Um, again, this is super important because of its keyword. It's got trample. If we've got loads and loads of snakes out, uh, or maybe a croc, I mean, that's five, um, we can play this quite quickly. Um, I think I managed to get this out on turn five. Um, so, yeah, he's legendary, and obviously he's a 12-12, and he's got trample. And again, if we can make this unblockable, with something I'm going to show you rather soon, then he can go straight in there. So, with that, and the Miriarch, lots of keywords. Um, as you can see by now, it's literally putting them all together, and then running straight through um, with something that's unblockable. But, yeah, so far... It has been pretty fun. We will now do everything that is a non-creature. So, this is one of them, and this is mighty fine. We've got a whole play set of Key to the City artifact. Um, excuse me, it's two mana, and uh, you tap it and you discard a card. Ooh! There you have it. Um, discard a card, and up to one creature can't be blocked this turn. So, doesn't matter what creature we've got, we can get through our Zombie Croc, Amit, losing all the counters on it and making it a 5 5 again, to then bung a load more counters on and drain and make things. We could make it our Archfiend if they happen to have a flyer, we can get through with that one. Um, obviously, we've got Majestic Myriarch, Myriarch and we've got Gold to Primal Hunger. So, um, the ability to make something unblockable is fantastic. The other thing is, when we tap it and we discard, we then have the trigger on our Archfiend, um, which then allow, because we've discarded a card, to put a minus one counter on each creature your opponent controls, which will then mean, if we happen to have Majestic Miriarch out, which I did, it got stupidly big because we've now put out a load more. So, just from one discard, if we've got our Archfiend out, we can put down another maybe four, five, six to uh, minus one counters, which will then make another five, six snakes, which will then make another 10, 12 power and toughness on a Miriarch, and say, actually, that is the dude that we're going to have uh, become unblockable, and basically swing in for the win. I nearly did it just with him, doing 26 damage. Um, unfortunately, I miscalculated. Um, but yeah, I was one point away from winning. So, and that was an amazing game. Thank you very much indeed, Simon. So, <laughs> we've got um, four of Key to the City. The other good thing is, obviously we've discarded a card, but um, at the beginning of our upkeep, um, we can untap uh, Key to the City, we can pay two mana and draw a card. So we can then start, if we've got a world of mana um, that we're not really using, we can then get two cards per turn. And obviously if you've got more than one key to the city, it's even better. So we're going to play a whole play set of key to the city. And we are also going to play a whole play set of Nest of Scarabs. Everything that we've been doing with the snake, as far as one counter, one counter, and making a snake, and draining with our spider can now get even worse if we get this enchantment down. Nest of Scarabs for uh, two and a black. Whenever you put one or more minus one counters on a creature, create that many one one black insect tokens. So straight off the bat, if we just went with Channel Channeler Initiate and we put all our three counters on that, if we have a Nest of Scarabs out, we will create three insects. If we happen to have an Apatra out, 
we would then create three insects and also a snake. So there's so many ways that we can just make and make and make and make and just have a ginormous board full of stuff, um, half of which hopefully will be snakes with death, death touch. And then obviously, because there's so many, that Miriarch, it just needs one hit and, and that will be game over. So um, the only other thing we've got in the main board that I haven't mentioned is a Planeswalker. And this is the main reason that we're splashing white. Uh, I have two copies of uh, Huatli, Radiant Champion. And this is insane. This is basically the reason that I did this deck in the first place. This Planeswalker is four mana, uh, two green and a white. It has three loyalty, but it's plus one. It is put a loyalty counter on Huatli for each creature you control. It got huge straight away. I mean, I played it and I didn't have a lot of stuff out, and it automatically was an 11. Um, it, it's just going to be massive. Hopefully, so massive that even if everyone swung in and went for it, it would still survive. Um, the super important thing with this, obviously, the ultimate's fantastic, and you can ultimate it in theory on on your second second go. Um, it's minus one ability. Target creature gets plus one. Sorry, plus X plus X until the end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. Bung that onto your unblockable dude. Or stick it on something with trample. Um, it could be anything. You know, it's it was amazing. So um, personally, I would just stick it on my Miriarch or any whatever's unblockable and just go straight in. It's going to be massive. Um, if you are going to be using the uh, ultimate, it's minus eight, which you're going to be able to get to pretty quick. Um, and you get an emblem. Uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. If you're getting a couple of snakes each turn, you're going to basically refill your hand every two goes. As long as you don't mill yourself out. So <laughs> um, that is kind of the main board. Um, I think that takes me to about 57 cards, something like that. I think I played about 62 in total. Um, as far as my additional cards, um, I had Trespasser's Curse, again, draining. Um, I also had Fatal Push, um, just because I didn't want to walk the plank, because I was fearful of Merfolk. So, Fatal Push is going to be fantastic. You just get one of your snakes or your insects to die, or sacrifice it to bomb to, and then there you have it. You can Fatal Push, and for one mana, get rid of something that costs them four mana. Um, as far as sideboard, well, I mean, it could be anything. One thing I have noticed, um, with Nest of Scarabs, uh, I'm possibly going to change it to three, and put one Anointed Procession. Um, and obviously, Anointed Procession is going to double every single token um, that triggers. So... I think I'm going to have to do that just to see how many tokens I can get out. So, three nests, one anointed procession. I think that might be the new way of doing it. I'll give it a go, and obviously I'll put in the comments um, how it went. Did it did it improve? It's only one, but um, I don't want too many whites. I don't want many white cards. So, um, I'm hoping that um, just having one, if I happen to find it, brilliant. I'm going to be able to um, hopefully draw more cards off of Key to the City, so I can start running through and getting maybe two a you know, two each turn, and I might find it. If I do, it's going to trigger off. It's going to be ridiculous. Um, that's what we got so far. So as far as the cyborg and uh, sideboarding goes, I didn't really sideboard a lot to be totally honest. I just stuck with what I had, just for the fact that it was my first uh, first evening of uh, playing this deck. It was hugely enjoyable. I have got a few I few ideas for um, the sideboard. We've got Cartouche, uh, Cartouche of Ambition, uh, one of, just because if I've got a massive dude that uh, I can stick the Cartouche on, it's then going to be a life linker. That could be fantastic if Miriarch comes out, because then Miriarch 
it's another keyword. We can have a flying life linker, indestructible menace beast, um, and we could gain, you know, 20 life or something insane in one turn. So um, we go one cartouche. Uh, we've also got heroic intervention. That could save um, a board wipe as far as making everything hexproof and indestructible, if I can remember correctly. Larger than life, just so we could maybe pop something on there and get trample and plus four, plus four through. Stinging shot, which I think is one green. Um, that will allow us to put three counters on something with flying. So obviously there's a chance, um, you know, it, it could do the servos. Um, it could do a couple of uh, dinosaurs. But um, yeah, situational, but if we really do need it, um, that could be fantastic. We're going to be able to bung three minus one counters on the dude. Um, if we have uh, Hapatra out, we're going to make a snake. If we have Nesta Scarabs out, we're going to get three uh, insects. If we happen to have Anointed Procession out, then obviously we're going to get two snakes. We're going to get six beetles. Um, it, could, it could be ridiculous. Um, obviously, also... If we've got the spider out, Obelisk Spider, then that one mana is going to drain them three life, and we're going to gain three life. So um, lots of different things we can do with that. I will probably put in the comments what I end up doing over the next couple of weeks regarding my sideboard. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think should go in the sideboard. Um, yeah, this is ongoing, um, but very, very excited to... Uh, basically share with you all what I have tried to put together so far. Um, I hope this has made sense. Um, any improvements, please let me know. Honesty, you know, just let me know what you think. Is this a good start? Is it ridiculous? Um, obviously, the more games I play, um, I will be able to fine-tune it. But I have to say, um, first attempts, I came fourth. Um, my results were uh, two, one, and one. So I was rather pleased. So I've got some prizes, which is nice. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Um, if you've got to this part of the video, then um, thank you very much for sticking with me and going through all of this. And um, if you have done, please like, share and subscribe. And I will also just like to point out, we do have a giveaway, which I'll put up um, very, very shortly. Um, click on that. It's worldwide you can get some goodies, including a planeswalker. So anyway, thank you very much. Take care. And we will see you again soon here on Cardboard Badger.